that's why when when Ripple started and they're saying, oh, you know, we're gonna do cross border payments and we're we're gonna work with the system, we're gonna do cross border. They're making it sound like like it's small, right? Like, oh, we're gonna address this this pain point and we're gonna do cross borders. It's not only cross border, my friend. It's about fixing the liquidity crisis. It's about fixing the Triffin's dilemma. It's about that vision of the Bancor going way back to the Bretton Woods Agreement, because when the Bretton Woods Agreement was created, there was two, in 1945, which is the same day the IMF created, there was two, after World War II, I believe, there was two propositions. There was either we go with the US dollar being backed by gold, or we go with the Bancor, because the IMF was proposing the Bancor, which would be a neutral bridge currency that the IMF would control. And at the time, the world decided to go with the US dollar and they were going to back it by gold. So the U.S. dollar would be the main global reserve currency. Everybody would do their global trade with, with the U.S. dollar. And uh, basically, the U.S. agreed to hold gold reserves for every U.S. dollar that they issued. At the time, there was an economist by the name of, his last name was Triffins. And he said, like, this is okay for now, but in the future, it's going to be problematic because the U.S. will eventually have to run deficits to be able to supply the U.S. dollar for all the other countries to be able to to do global trade like they're going to have to run deficits and this is going to be a problem and that's what's called the triffin's dilemma but the other thing that was proposed at the time was the bancor which again would be a neutral bridge currency it's not tied to any government that way uh, because it's not tied to a sovereign currency and it's not tied to any national body like to a country the bancor would have been more neutral and it, every country would be allowed to do what they want to do and it didn't affect any other country so Basically, when you we have a sovereign currency that acts as a global reserve currency, like what they did at the Bretton Woods originally in 1945, what happens is when that country, in that case the U.S., when they do certain monetary policy, because they're the global reserve currency, it affects all the other countries, sometimes in a negative way. That's what they're trying to fix, right? So in 1968, the IMF proposed the SDR, they created the SDR, which is technically identical to what they had proposed at uh, with the Bancor, 1968, they created the SDR. Never got global adoption because it never got that liquidity and use cases because at the time they only distributed it to the banks. They never gave it to all the tech companies and corporations and all the, and the developers to gain some, to build use cases around it. And the way they structured it, it was flawed. It never got global adoption because it never got all those use cases and it never got the liquidity that it needed in order to become the global reserve currency and act as a as a bridge currency.